We are in Bonaire for this episode. And I have to say, I love Bonaire. So how do you get here? Well, most likely by airplane. Air France, American, Avianca, Copa, KLM, Spirit, United, and several others. But when searching for flights, note that some airlines don't fly here every day. So it's best to be flexible and search a day or two before and after the dates you would prefer to travel. Bon Air is a small desert island in the Caribbean with a very constant humidity averaging around 76%. Bonaire is a diver's paradise, and it is outside the hurricane belt. The entire island is a national marine park, and you'll recognize that when you're getting ready to board the airplane to fly here. You'll notice everyone around you has some sign that they snorkel or they're a diver, whether it be logos on their clothing or bags with a fin or diving mask peeking out. I'm at Patagonia Restaurant in Bon Air having the lobster bisque and it is delicious. And, and the, my next course is going to be the mahi-mahi, which is the catch of the day. The Patagonia is an Argentinian restaurant and I have to eat here every time I'm in Bon Air. They always have some fantastic fish on special that has some delicious cream sauce with it and their soups are always to die for. The food is always amazing here. Sand Dollar is a condominium complex that is super convenient to dive friends and the pier in front of dive friends. While we didn't stay there this time, I have stayed there before and it is pretty much like a home with a balcony looking at the ocean, a living room, kitchen, and a couple of bedrooms. We just had breakfast at Breeze and Bites. It's right next to Sand Dollar. And Dive Friends, which is the dive shop uh, here, is right behind us. This is about five to 10 minutes from the Bon Air Airport. So this is a fantastic location. As you can see, you're right here by the water. Welcome to Breeze and Bites. This is always a great place to have breakfast. They of course serve lunch and dinner as well, but I typically stay nearby and it's a great place for me to get my morning coffee and a fantastic breakfast. I know it looks more like a lunch, but it has an egg on it. I just got my dive tag. This lets me dive on the island. Uh, this costs $25 and it's pretty much a tax. And uh, I'm here waiting to get my equipment. Uh, we're at Dive Friends and they have seven shops across the island so you can trade out uh, oxygen tanks or nitrox tanks depending on whether you're nitrox certified or not and uh, they're pretty awesome to deal with but we're going to get ready to go diving dive friends is the place where i always get my scuba rentals there are other dive shops on the island and i'm sure they are equally as good i just haven't tried them As with any other Caribbean island, you'll see kiteboarders enjoying the surf.
We were driving along looking for dive sites and we ran across all these uh, like salt beds and then ran across this water, which is pink. And it looks like uh, they're basically uh, making the, the salt more pure because each, each pink pond gets more pink. So uh, it was really some intense colors because we've got this pink only to be in contrast with this beautiful blue ocean behind, uh, behind us over here. These salt flats are owned by Cargill, and no matter what travel site you go on, Cargill will show up as a place to go see, which would probably make you scratch your head and wonder why. But now you can totally understand why, as the pink salt flats next to the blue-green Caribbean waters are a sight to behold. Oh, and the sea salt produced here is actually pink as well. Before you leave, you should buy a bag of this salt and take it home with you. You'll be glad you did. I just came out of one of the slave huts and uh, this is, they at least had a beautiful uh, sights to see, but this is a dive site called Red Slave. And uh, these are all the huts that the slaves lived on many years ago. These slave huts were constructed in the early 1850s for sleeping quarters for the unfortunate salt laborers. And while you sadly can't stand upright in them, four to six people would have to sleep in these. We're at the Red Slave dive site and we're getting ready to go for a dive. So uh, we're gonna have some great footage for you to check out. Yes, the scuba diving is the real reason you come here. If you aren't a scuba diver, I can't strongly encourage you enough to get certified. You can definitely do that here on Bonaire, but I would suggest you do it where you live. And don't think that you need to be at the coast to get certified. I got certified in Greensboro, which is three hours from the coast. It took me six evenings over the course of two weeks of going to a swimming pool for about an hour and a half and two full days on the weekend at the end at a nearby rock quarry that has been converted to a dive resort for my final certification. It costs around $400 to get certified, but our planet is 70% water and this opens up the entire planet for you to explore. The colors that you'll see underwater are unreal. The fish are just amazing, vibrant colors. We're on the pier uh, that belongs to Dive Friends that's right next to Sand Dollar, and we're getting ready to do another dive. But the one thing you should know about Bon Air is there are over a hundred dive sites that you can literally just walk right in from the, the shoreline. And that makes it nice because you don't have to rent a boat. Uh, you don't have to have all that extra unneeded expense here. Uh, so it really makes it a inexpensive place to go diving. I'd say that 90% of the travelers here are actually here to snorkel or scuba dive. And with over a hundred dive sites that you simply walk in from the shore, it is easy to understand why this is a diver's paradise. This is by far one of the least expensive places to go diving because you don't have to charter a boat. And there are scuba shops conveniently located around the island where you can pick up and drop off your oxygen or nitrox tanks. This isn't my first time to Bonaire. My first time was with my local dive shop in Greensboro called NADCO. The owners, Randy and Dolphy, will crack you up. And yes, Dolphy is one letter shy of being Dolphin, and that's his real name, not a nickname. But I digress. Driving in Bonaire is easy. The speed limits are all fairly slow. The only thing you'll really have to pay attention to is there are several locations where the road is only one lane with enough shoulder on each side so you and an oncoming vehicle can nudge over to share the road at passing. When renting a vehicle, 
a pickup truck is a common rental here and I would suggest that as your rental especially if you're diving. It gives you a place to put your diving gear and most of them are four door with back seat fully capable of transporting four or five people and it will let you get to a few of the more off the beaten path spots. Bonaire has all kinds of amazing things and some of them are the wildlife and in the case here we have pink flamingos that we've spotted them here as well as on another part of the island. Have you ever seen a flamingo? No, not the kind in your neighbor's front yard. There are a few places to see hundreds of these beautiful pink birds on the most northern part of the island and also on the southernmost part. These big birds hatch from an egg. You say, of course they do, they're a bird. But these things can stand four to more than four and a half feet tall. So as I was saying, they hatch with grayish red plumage. But the adults range from light pink to bright red due to aqueous bacteria and beta carotene obtained from their food supply. A well-fed, healthy flamingo is more vibrantly colored than a white or pale flamingo. Lake Godomir is to the north and here is one of the locations where you'll find plenty of pink flamingos. On Bon Air, I have noticed that there are more pricks than any other place I have ever been. But they're not the kind of pricks that you think I'm talking about. Cacti everywhere. The landscapes are amazing to take in, and there are cacti everywhere. While English dominates the island, you might hear another language which is called Papiamento. Papiamento is a Creole language spoken throughout the Caribbean largely based on Portuguese and Spanish, but with quite a bit of influence from the Dutch language. In Papiamento, the word for cactus is caduci. We're at Rum Runners at Captain Don's here on Bonaire, and we're right now we're having a uh, Bonaire Blonde, which is their local beer, but uh, we're waiting for the Wahoo to come out, uh, which is the catch of the day today. To get to Rum Runners, you'll enter Captain Don's habitat and walk behind it towards the water. This restaurant always has great food. And speaking of Captain Don, He's credited with getting the island to become a national marine sanctuary and was inducted into the Scuba Hall of Fame for his contributions. Bon dia and welcome to the brewery. It's a very nice place to drink a lovely beer. In the heart of Kralendik, you'll find Bonaire Blonde Brewery. Well, some of the beers are local. Um, some of the beers are from Amsterdam and some of the beers are actually from Bonaire itself. Uh, if you have a nice porter or a nice Blanc beer, you can get it over here at the brewery as well. And they are both lovely, especially if you like the porter because they are really, really nice and that coffee flavor still gets it in your mouth. This beer is a local to Bonaire and was started in 2014 and is the only brewery on the island. It has become so popular that they have had to have some of their beer made in the Netherlands. The Netherlands, you ask? Don't forget, this is a Dutch island. Their tap room is a great place to go hang out with some friends or make some new ones. You are, after all, on a Caribbean island where everyone is there to have a good time and be friendly. Between Two Buns, I know, an interesting name, but uh, this is a great breakfast place. Uh, I was here a year ago and uh, ate a couple breakfasts here. Uh, it's a great place to come get eggs, bacon, ham, an omelet, uh, but uh, it's really close. The ocean's right behind us. Uh, there's a lot of things nearby, so uh, it's quick access. 
Between Two Buns is also next to Dive Friends, Breeze and Bites, Sand Dollar, and down the street from Captain Don's Habitat. We're in downtown Kralendijk, and as you can see, the buildings are super colorful here. And this is their little shopping district. Uh, lots of tourists here, but uh, it's where all their shops, some of their restaurants, and there's even a brewery a couple streets over. Kralendijk is the capital of Bonaire and where most of your shopping and restaurants are located. The colors of the buildings are inviting and add to the beauty of this capital city. And did you know that you can drink a cactus? Sounds impossible, doesn't it? Well, the folks at Kadushi Distillery can show you how. Started in 2009 by Eric and Yolanda Geetman, who, like 60% of the residents on the island, are originally from the Netherlands, moved here to start their venture with their daughter in the town of Rincon. Now they make several different liqueurs and liquors, actually one for each Dutch island. I'm Eric. I'm Matt, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. I'm Eric, I'm the owner and chief distiller here. Would you like to know how we make this stuff? Absolutely. All right, come with me to the okay. distillery and I'll show you. Yes, this is the actual setup we're using, so we're small. This here is the cactus we use, it's the Kadushi cactus. It is the tallest cactus we have here on the island. It can become over 12 meters high and over 100 years old. The cactus itself doesn't contain enough sugars to make an alcohol and that's why we use this locally grown grain, sorghum, to make our alcohol. The peel of the lime and the peel of the cactus, the two main ingredients of the Kedushi liqueur. For the lime it takes about one month to extract, for the cactus it takes about half a year. Oh, wow. So that's the Kedushi or Bonaire liqueur, that's the one we started with in 2009. And after that, we developed a liqueur for every Dutch Caribbean island based on the traditions of these different islands. So in addition to the cactus liqueur for Bonaire, there's one for Aruba, Curacao, St. Eustatius, Saba, and St. Martin, each being made with something representative from their respective island. Well, with the exception of St. Martin. There wasn't a fruit unique to the island, so they made it orange to represent the national color of the Netherlands. Yeah, I know orange isn't in their flag, but trust me, orange is their national color. Google it. A trip to Bonaire wouldn't be complete without a visit to the Kadushi Distillery. I asked Eric if they export to other countries and he told me yes, one suitcase at a time. So stop by and take a taste. They'll be happy to let you taste their offerings and do them a favor in kind. Export your favorite bottle or two and your suitcase back to your home country. If you want to check out some ass on Bonaire, then this is the place, the Donkey Sanctuary. A few hundred years ago, donkeys were imported to the island from Spain to be used for hard labor. But once modern transportation came about, these animals were no longer needed, so they were simply freed, allowing them to fend for themselves on this island. 
Unfortunately, donkeys don't do well on a dry and barren island, causing many of them to die from hunger and dehydration. So I introduce you to the Donkey Sanctuary, who cares for about 700 of these very friendly animals. You can buy a bag of carrots at the visitor center and gift shop, and drive your vehicle through the sanctuary grounds, feeding the donkeys carrots from inside your car. These are very friendly and docile animals. They do love those carrots though, so you'll have to be prepared to be the most popular person around when you're here. Really helps your ego. I'm here on the observation tower. We're here checking out all the donkeys from this tower and, and all 700 donkeys that are here on, in the sanctuary are all fed three meals a day. They're well taken care of. I promise that you will have a very different take on donkeys after leaving here and you'll have a newfound love for them. By the way, you can adopt one for $175 per year, but honestly they'll take any donation you can do. These folks are doing a really good thing and this is a very worthy cause. Our time in Bonaire is coming to an end, unfortunately. Uh, I've totally enjoyed my time here. We've got to dive. We've uh, enjoyed some food, and we've just enjoyed a bunch of other activities. And uh, we board a flight real early in tomorrow morning. And uh, while it's off to another adventure, uh, this adventure comes to an end, and uh, I have to say I'm sad. So uh, I hope you've enjoyed our time in Bonaire. I know I have. One of the things I love about Bonaire is you can get 30 minute round trip flights to Curacao for around $150. For about double that, you can also catch a flight to Aruba, but unfortunately you'll have a connection in Curacao.